Oh, hey, you guys and gals. <laughs> uh, I just made this long video about Officer Heidi Lambley, which Lizzie turned me on to who this woman was in this uh, training exercise or whatever this was, this video was about. Anyway, I just did this hour long video about her and all her, just a bunch of stuff, and it didn't record. So I'm doing it over, but I'm going to do a little bit of a different version. I'm going to do, there's so much detailed in this Pullman police stuff that it's just, it's just crazy. Um, and I believe it's all connected with the Moscow, in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and just do, um, show you a little bit about her. So she was named Officer of the Year in 2019. Her name's Heidi Lambley. Thanks, Lizzie, for this, by the way. <laughs> um, and it's Pullman Police Detective Heidi Lambley has been named the department's Law Enforcement Officer of the Year. Detective Lambley was the primary investigator on 14 sexual assault cases in 2018. She has been with Pullman PD for 14 years. And this is Heidi right here. So this is who you're hearing in this video, right? So, that's all they have on this article. Isn't that crazy? So, hey, Heidi. Let's see, let me take a screenshot. Okay, cool. So I went to take a screenshot of this when I, after I recorded that video, and it wouldn't let me, and I'm like, oh no, that means the video didn't record. I was so upset. Well, so, Anyway, I've got a bunch of stuff here on, is this the right one? Yeah, here we go. I think it is this one. Yeah. So this is the Whitman County Watch, and this was in 2021. So she got Officer of the Year, right, in 19, 2019. So investigation refutes officers' allegations of, tech, of toxic gender bias at Pullman Police Department. The Pullman Police Department recently hired an employment attorney to investigate allegations of gender discrimination after a longtime female officer described unfair treatment, a toxic work culture, and other concerns. Pullman Police Officer Heidi Lambley, the longest serving police officer with 16 years at the department, brought a number of workplace complaints to the city's official last year. A Seattle attorney hired to investigate later disputed these allegations, instead blaming interpersonal friction on Lambley. And doesn't like getting it from inside and the outside of the walls, huh? In emails and reports obtained by Whitman County Watch, Lambley allegedly dismissive uh, Lambley allegedly dismissive or condescending treatment of female officers, troubled interaction troubling interactions with crime victims, inconsistent inconsistent backup support, and officers wasting time on the internet at the station. We have okay, I have to let you guys know that I bit my cheek earlier today, so if you hear smacking noises, it's because it's my yeah, I'm trying not to bite it again. So I'm kind of moving my mouth a little bit weird. <laughs> and I'm just kind of scared I don't want to bite it again. Because you guys all know what that's like. It just gets worse and worse and worse. And this was pretty bad to begin with. So anyway, so excuse the noises. Um, we have two major issues Lambie wrote to the investigating attorney in October. The long-term culture which has accepted and allowed the women employees to be treated as second-class citizens. This culture allowed women victims to be disregarded. The second issue is primarily new officers who fail to understand that everyone deserves respect. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> uh, Lambie recently told Whitman County Watch she highly respects her fellow officers and raised her concerns in an effort to improve the department's working environment. She has since felt attacked by the resulting investigation, which she considers unfair and inaccurate. She said the findings may also make 
others less likely to speak up. So when I read that part right there, it just threw me back into listening to this body cam of the way she sounded in uh, that cam. Like she sounded uh, like not sure of herself. She was very unsure of herself in the situation for her being a police officer and telling someone to put his hands on his head, come out with your hands up, that kind of thing. It was very not aggressive for an officer like in a, in a situation like that. Um, if it truly was a situation or training, no matter what it was, they're supposed to act like they're, you know, in a situation, right? So I felt like she sounded, she sounded beat down and she sounded like she was unsure. Like it's all I've got, that's what it sounded like to me, in my opinion. So anyway, police chief Gary Jenkins said city officials decided to hire an employment attorney, Rebecca Dean of Seattle. So on top of everything else, a woman comes in to do this, right? And then, yeah, this is interesting. Of course, you guys already know I've read all this because I just told you. I <laughs> read it through and the video didn't go. Oh, oh to conduct a third-party investigation due to the broad scope of the allegations. This is this Rebecca Dean of Seattle was brought in for. While other law enforcement Agencies sometimes take over cases involving local officers. Jenkins said this was his first time seeking a civilian review of department conduct. For every, from everything I've seen and heard, Jenkins said, female officers are treated as equals. They're well respected. Lambley initially brought concerns about the department's working environment to the city administrator in the late 2019, which was the year she was officer of the year, right? When she returned to patrol work in January 2020 after five years on a detective rotation, she followed up with more specific allegations. In, in investigation re records and notes, Lambie stated she believed fellow officers, female officers, faced social exclusion, gendered performance criticism, and disparaging gossip. She also reported male officers making insensitive or callous remarks about crime victims at least once in their presence. Wow. When Lambie was named officer in charge of her shift last summer, another officer emailed her supervisor. This is a joke, right? The officer claimed Lambie was promoted over others with more seniority. Oh, poor baby. Lambie detailed many instances of alleged slights or unprofessional conduct from the past year in a 10-page note to the investigating attorney. Emails also showed Lambley repeatedly seeking constructive counsel for her sergeant on how to improve relations with other officers on her shift. So it looks like she was putting in the time and the effort to help, you know, deter what was going on to, to you know, make it better and to improve it. And, like, it was coming back on her. And, and, and you know, quite possibly, of course, it could, I mean, um, it goes both ways, right? But from what I've seen and heard with these officers, they are, they're slugs, man. They're slimy. Yeah, well, for the investigation, in, in my opinion, for the investigation into allegations, Seattle Attorney Dean conducted Zoom interviews with all five female officers and other staff in the department stating in, stating, starting in August. She also reviewed email exchanges and other documents before issuing a 43-page report in late November. The report did not confirm any evidence of gender discrimination. <laughs> that lady must have a set of balls. Lambley and the only woman who, Lambley is the only woman who stated concerns about their current work environment, the report states, concluding there was, in each instance, credible evidence of a reason for the situation other than Lambley's gender. Wow. Well, there's credible evidence for the reason for the situation other than the, her gender. So there was... Wow. Dean's report at attributed recent interpersonal conflicts to Lambley, describing her as sometimes confrontational and ac accusatory. The report states others provided examples of rude, hostile, or condescending remarks or interactions with fellow officers. Well, when you're ha getting cat calls called at you and you turn around and say, shut the F up, you know, grow up, you know, be a man, don't 
act like a teenage, whatever that is. Yeah. So these guys all stuck together. And, oh, man. Talk about sick. The evidence did show that there were significant frictions between Lambley and some of her colleagues. The report says, in an assessment, that friction was caused to a substantial degree by Lambley's behavior and communication style. Boy. Lambley's, or, uh, Lambley, Jenkins confirmed Dean received $5,576 for the investigation, with half coming from the police budget and half from the city's insurance carrier. Other news reports listed Dean's hourly rate as $250, suggesting approximately 22 billable hours on this matter. Dean has found instances of gender discrimination or workplace hostility at other government agencies elsewhere in the state, according to several news reports. Some of those investigations cost between 20 grand and 50 to conduct. Wow, they sure p- pulled, a, pulled it out of their w- budget for this one, didn't they? Jeez. The department's internal affairs report closed the complaint as unfounded and cleared the four officers named in the concerns. Internal investigations previously substantiated sexual harassment complaints against three Pullman police officers in 2016. None of those individuals still work at the department. Now these, all these little green things in here, we're going to go through this because I, I went through it on the other video, but it was an hour long and I'm going to try to keep them down a little bit so they upload faster because it's just been a nightmare trying to get these longer ones to upload. Um, they're really watching or whatever they're doing. I don't know, but it's just taken forever. So I'm going to do it this way and we're going to go back and we're going to make this like a series because this is interesting. Very interesting. And let me tell you, there's some crazy stuff going on here. And, and the thing is, is these guys are intertwined with the Moscow police department because I mean, yeah, think about it. Like the, you know, the, the men and the women are totally switched back and forth from these two um, departments. They're like brother and sister, or brother and brother, or sister and sister, whatever you want to call it. They're family. So they are working together. So I do believe that that Pullman PD and Moscow PD are pretty much, if I want to say it, one and the same, except for, you know, one's in Washington, one's in Idaho, which even probably makes it better for them. Right, because they can switch things around to where what wouldn't happen, what wouldn't go in Idaho, would go in Washington, and vice versa. So it's only easy; it's only better for them. Oh, it's just creepy. Anyway, so the none of these individuals still work at the department. Okay, so Lambley's private attorney Jenna Brozick who was retained after the recent investigation concluded, called the investigation process hostile to Lambley and seemingly partial to the entities paying for the review. Obviously, the investigator took side here and made an argument for that side, Brosnick said, adding it was a biased and unprofessional investigation. The investigator tried to turn it around on Officer Lambley, which was inappropriate and unwarranted. Yeah, I, I, by the terms and the way it's worded, I absolutely agree. Brosnick argued the finding reflected a double standard applied to female professionals that characterizes traits like confidence or assertion as problematic, yep, when exhibited by women instead of men. She said the same traits get labeled condescending or confrontational when it, you know, when it's from a woman. And that's so crazy, you guys. It's so true, especially in this type of um, career setting and them being, you know, being able to say what they want, when they want, you know, they're the man, they can, you know, cat call to women or do whatever, you know, whatever they want. But then when a woman stands up for herself, she's called a, you know what? Yeah. Bringing forward the al- the alleged discrimination had backfired against Lambley, Brosnick said. Other officers, especially those with less seniority, may now hesitate to call out future problems, which indeed is absolutely true. And that's probably what happened in the beginning. It probably what happened from the get-go, you know, the officers that, the female officers that, and maybe even male, you know, depending on how long they've been there and how they felt about, you know, if they were the good guys. But now these females aren't going to stand up because they're just going to be it's just going to be worse for him, right? So do you think anyone else is going to speak up after this investigation, Brosnick said? <laughs> yeah. Police Chief Jenkins acknowledged Lambley has a unique perspective on the department as its most sen- senior 
female officer. He said a former female officer rose to the rank of sergeant at the department before he, before he took over as chief. So I wonder what happened when he took over as chief. Why, it, why she's gone now? I mean, I wonder what the wonder what that is all about. That's got me curious. Jenkins also noted six of his last twelve officer hires were women. The the next most senior female officer started at the department in 2016. Well, from what I understand, the reason why, if, if there was men to hire, he would have hired men. But the problem was that there were so many men being taken out and retiring because of misconduct that there weren't enough men to hire. So he had to hire women. That's what I'm thinking. The police chief also recognizes concerns about officers spending more time at the station, often making phone calls and sending emails instead of having face-to-face contacts amid the ongoing pandemic. He said the department is working to find a better balance on keeping officers out in the community. On a phone interview, Lambley described the investigation process as very painful. She said she did not receive support or advocacy from the Pullman Police Officers Guild during the investigation, but still has great respect for her fellow officers. She describes some as brothers. And I'm sure, like, you know, that she's got, I'm sure there's those ones that are always going to be those good old boys. And then there's the ones that, yeah, she probably does have camaraderie with, you know, and trust. And thank God for that, because I'd never walk outside if I didn't know that, you know. She said she was never wanted anyone. Pu- she said she never wanted anyone punished, but hoped the department would take a hard look at how it could be, how it could better, by its female officers. And yeah, I mean, if she had talked about it amongst the department and nothing was happening, and she felt, you know, there's a situation here, you know, then you'd have to bring in someone from the outside. And then, of course, this happens, and that's wow. How. Uh, painful that must have been what kept me here is my trust in my co-workers she said adding it's not my co-workers who conducted this investigation yeah Brosnick said this potential for further retaliation has remained a concern in the wake of the investigation Lambley said she is not looking into legal options she considers the matter over and hopes to move forward from the process oh, I bet she has to put up with a bunch of crap Jenkins said he has met with all official involved in would not tolerate any retaliation. He said that there have been no other staff staffing changes or discipline imposed as a result of the investigation. I, am, I, I highly doubt it would be documented if it was. Jeez. All right. Okay, I'm not, a, I'm not quite sure what this means right here, but I mean, it's, is it one thought on one thought on investigation or... I thought on uh, one thought on investigation refutes number one thought on investigation refutes officers allegations of toxic I don't know if that it's weird how that's kind of that you don't get it gendered bias at police department okay so February of 2021 hard to just disagree with Lambley's assessment of the situation when previous coverage of the investigation by Rebecca Dean includes it is important to note Dean adds that Huddy did not tell overt sexual jokes, make overt sexual innuendos, make advances, or seek to meet with the women in private, or meet with the women and girl in private setting. What? Hard to disagree with Lambley's assessment of the situation when previous coverage of the investigation by Rebecca Dean includes. So this is the attorney. Uh putting this in her notes, right? It is important to note, Dean, the attorney, adds, that Huddy, I'm not sure exactly who Huddy is, did not tell overt sexual jokes, did not tell overt sexual jokes, make overt sexual innuendos, make, now, what she considers overt to someone else, different story, make advances or seek to meet with the woman and girl in private setting. What? That should not even be in a note right there, right? It's a note, sure, but calling it important seems like an overstatement. At a different event, one woman was selling raffle tickets for for a trip. The young woman told Dean that had he agreed to buy a ticket, she said he did not think his wife would go and invited the teenager to go with him. 
teenager told Dean that Huddy laughed and then stared at her as if waiting for an answer. Ugh, gross. Dean's assessment mildly Dean's assessment mildly flirtatious. What a b u don't get me started. Wow. So all these little green things are in here. That's what we're going to click on later. So, because uh, there's a lot of them. So I'm going to leave this one as it is right here. Get this uploaded. And then I'm going to start in on a few more of these things because up here, watch your eyeballs. I'm going to scroll fast. Yep. Let me see which one I'll do first. Don't want to deal with that Rebecca Dean. Don't like her at all. She can go just talk to the boys. Um, maybe this one. Let's see. Oh, this goes to Vancouver. Oh, must be partially what her findings. So, Dean, so it's part of her findings. So I don't want to do that one. Okay, so this is what we're going to jump into. Some substantiated sexual harassment complaints. That one. And then we're going to go into, which these are lengthy, right? Pretty lengthy. Like I said, the other one was an hour long. And this one's only 21 minutes at this point. Um, but then you've got um, internal affairs report. Holy Moses, that one is way crazy. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that one. I'll have to turn my phone the other way because I won't even be able to read it. I mean, there are files and files and files on this stuff. It's just nuts. So I'm going to go with this one right here. And I'm going to call it, uh, we'll just, uh, Toxic Gender Bias. Yeah, there we go. Heidi claims Toxic Gender Bias. Okay, we got it. All right, talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching.